Well, welcome back everybody to the Force India career mode and we're at round number 11 in Hungary. And this is most likely going to be one of our weakest weekends of the year. We've slowly been getting closer and closer to Red Bull the last few races. But I would expect this to be a difficult track for our car. Obviously we've been working on the aerodynamics since day one. Um, and the strength of our car is really in a straight line with that Mercedes power pack in the back of the beast. But... You know, we'll give it our all. We have slowly been improving the aerodynamics, so hopefully we can make some strides here. But again, as it has been for some of the early races, we'll probably be targeting 7th or 8th. Um, and of course, trying to beat our teammate Perez if we can. But into practice and everything was fairly straightforward. Um, no real engine issues this weekend because we obviously got that 5th power unit now in the cycle. So we've got plenty to play with for the moment. And we tried to use some older parts for practice and then obviously some newer parts for the race as is the way it should go. Um, and with Spa and Monza coming up, we're definitely going to need that brand new fifth power element for there. So we're using mostly power unit four elements here. But the car feeling okay. As expected, it's a bit tricky in the slower mid-speed corners and it's really not a track we're expecting to excel massively at. But we are expecting some rain over the weekend as well. Looks like there's some at the end of qualifying and some in, at the end of the race itself. So practice is useful, but unfortunately no wet running here to get used to that. And that can really be our only saving grace if we want to challenge Red Bull this weekend. Is If some rain comes in the race and in qualifying, then it might be able to shake up the grid a bit. And enable us to get into that fabled top six. But to be honest, after all the good results we've had recently... I'm not expecting, it's, it's okay to have, you know, an okay race. But at the end of practice then, we've got some more points available to us. And this means we're going to go for another upgrade. Um, we're going to go for a front wing gurney flap, whatever that is. Um, but we're going to go for it and put it on the car as we continue to try and improve our aerodynamics. You can see that we're nearly up to the level of McLaren. Um, we were the second worst team with Aero when we started, but we've moved above Haas and Williams. Williams, to be honest, have been debuffed quite a bit um, from the last update in Aero. So they may have gone behind us just purely from that update. But um, as you can see here, we're putting most of the Element 4 power units and some of the threes. Control Electronics for some reason not wearing at all. But I've definitely found that since we made the upgrades to reliability um, for the ICE and the gearbox that we're getting a lot less wear so that was a good step to go but now we can concentrate back on aero and as we move into qualifying them um, a fairly okay first effort in the 21s and we had a second stab at it the lap after that because I didn't feel it was quite enough and we find quite a big improvement here to going to the one minute 20s for the first time this weekend and it's going to be easily through Q1 um, you can see our teammate there a couple of attempts behind, a lot of the front runners using the soft tyres which really highlights the gap we've got to those guys. But again, we're at the head of the front head of the midfield and we're only a couple of attempts ahead of that midfield. So difficulty still feeling good. Once again, completely unrealistic, Jolien Palmer. Out qualifying Nico Hulkenberg really is the most unrealistic game of 2017, I'm afraid. But uh, as we move on to Q2 now then. We've already had one effort, which was okay between Kvyat and Magnussen, but it was in the 21s, so we knew we could go quicker. And you join us on a lap now, almost 1.3 seconds up on the last one. This is looking like a low 1 minute 20, if we just keep it nice and tight. And you can see the, the skies are starting to darken a little as well. There is some rain on its way, so we were out as soon as the session started, literally the first car on the track. So this could be the crucial lap, because the rain is about to fall and we cross to do a low 1 minute 20 and go a provisional P4 and that's the way it stayed because the rain came out and a lot of the AI just did not get out in time and you can see some big scouts including our teammate and Felipe Massa are knocked out um, Vettel, Bottas and Verstappen sneak through on the intermediate tyres and some unexpected results for the likes of Kvyat and Magnussen getting comfortably through to Q3 because of that rain and it means that as we get on to Q3 it's going to be pouring down 
and our very first laps of the weekend on a wet circuit are in the all-important Q3. So we're just going to wind it up here and as always I'm just going to let you sit back and enjoy what is a very tentative <laughs> attempt at a Q3 lap in inter conditions. Fuel is marginal. We're close to using up the load. Pit in within two laps. As we come around the final corner then, we're nicely up on our first attempt on the intermediates and we cross the line for what seems like a fairly decent time. Um, we do end up slipping a couple of positions, but we are expect it is roughly where I would expect to be. Um, so ahead of Hulkenberg, Magnussen can be at and behind those top six. Only a couple of attempts off the Red Bulls, which means if we get some rain in the race, then hopefully we can have a good result here. But um, it's going to be a dry start to the race, so we'll give it our best shot it's always important to look at look after the tires here in Hungary so that's going to be another concern for us especially with our lack of aero but let's get going then with race number 11 of the season with me to enjoy it all is Anthony Davidson a man who made his Grand Prix debut here with Minardi back in 2002 so and this is a bit of a special one for you I'd imagine yeah I'd say so I also stood in to commentate on Jensen's win in 2006 and as I was a test driver for Honda at the time, you can imagine that was quite an emotional Grand Prix. It's also a tough circuit on the drivers this one too. Lots of long, slow corners that require a lot of patience from inside the car. Plus it's a very downforce heavy circuit. I mean it's all relative of course, but if you're lacking a bit in downforce or if you've got a bit of an imbalance in the setup, this is definitely one of the worst places to have to deal with that. So we found out as the grid was being shown then that uh, Sergio Perez, our teammate, has a whacking great grid penalty, presumably for changing some engine parts. Um, so it's always nice to see that it's not affecting just us, <laughs> and our teammate is getting that as well. And I think once we get to the sharp end, that's going to be really interesting. Um, if I'm hoping to pick up the episodes from now and make them a bit quicker, then I'm getting back into the game and getting back on top of it. So I am hoping we get to at least next season challenging towards the front and it's going to be really interesting with the grid penalties how that affects something like a championship um, and just adds that little bit of unpredictability in there which is always a nice feature and something I've asked for for a long time in F1 the fact that I haven't actually seen my car go bang yet but I have seen other people so it's possible so you have that unpredictability and you have it with the AI as well just makes the racing more realistic and um, just adds that little element that only Formula 1 can bring. But that is neither here nor there. We're about to get going then. Round number 11. And it's an okay start. Losing a little bit of time to the six in front of us. But again, a good second stage. We always seem to have that. That is also the AI being a little cautious into turn one. We take a look down the inside of the pair of bulls. And we've got Stappen on our inside. Ricardo's been muscled out. And now the Stappen has as well. And we're on to the back of Hamilton. Think better of it. We just want to keep things clean. We've done the maximum that we really, you know, should be able to do, which is get past the balls. And we just need to be clean from here on in to try and get away from them if we can. But you can see up ahead, two Ferraris clashing. And that would have been another Monster Zemolo head 
scratching in the garage as we run wide. I was trying to keep on top of that all there. <laughs> um, but run wide and let both the balls back past. And we can see here with Vettel what happened then. So he's side by side with Kimi Raikkonen and he's on the faster super soft tyres. But the German just does not want to give way to his teammate. And sort of is a bit too aggressive. That's a corner you really shouldn't be side by side with the car. He's round and into the barrier and almost taken out by ex Ferrari driver Felipe Massa as he has his own spin elsewhere and we can ride on board with Massa now coming up to that same corner and you can see he's battling here with Fernando Alonso who in turn is battling with Carlos Sainz, the two Spaniards and it's these two old teammates again the same corner which leads me to suggest it's you know it's an AI problem with that corner because you should not be going down the inside there <laughs> it's not an overtaking place at the speed you're going through there but we're on to lap two now then, and we've stabilized, stabilized things a little bit. We've, we're thinking that we've started to catch back up the two Red Bulls as we go on to lap six now. And you can get the, um, the idea that this is going to be quite a boring race for us, I'm afraid. We've started to drop back from them. We've definitely got the pace on those behind. Um, Perez has had to come right back through the field and is still back in about sort of 11th or 12th place at this point. And he's normally our main competition. And of course, Massa, we saw spin and lose his front wing as well. So he's out of the running. And it means we have a bit of a lonely race. We're cutting a bit of a lonely figure here. With the um, two Red Bulls scampering off into the distance. And actually looking like they could challenge Ferrari or Mercedes round here. As is historically accurate with the Red Bulls. And we're going to come into the pits on lap 9. We know that there is rain due it towards the end of the race. But we're going to stick with our normal strategy and hope that it plays into the rain and that is to go on to another set of super softs and then do a stint on the soft tyres at the end once again having a clutch issue um, I seem to be having it fairly regularly now in the pits that was also because the Renault and um, I think it was the Toro Rosso were in as well so we lose quite a bit of time to Hulkenberg behind um, but we get back out traffic free for the moment and really need to put the hammer down on these super soft tyres and you can see a massive train here behind I think it's Kevin Magnussen so we almost run into the back of the Sauber of Ericsson uh, Van Dorn and Palmer there as well but Van Dorn, uh, Palmer and Ericsson are going to peel off into the pits making our life a little easier so we've now just got Magnussen and the McLaren and Van Dorn to get past and we're going to do it in one chunk <laughs> TRS double slipstream and we easily outbreak Magnussen on fresh tyres into Turn 1. And that's the majority of the traffic dealt with. And that leaves only one car in our way, the wily old fox of Fernando Alonso. Starting on the soft tyres from a long way back, really making his strategy work here today. And obviously going long on these tyres, so he's not going to be getting out of the way anytime soon. So we need to make this move and make it soon. And any guesses for where we're going to overtake a McLaren Honda? Yes, on the straight. Get nice and close through the final corner. Almost uh, a little bit of oversteer there. But we managed to keep it under control. Open the DRS slot. And we're easy and fast. Well before the braking zone of Turn 1. And that leaves us with just Grosjean ahead. Who has yet to pit. I think there's someone ahead of Grosjean also yet to pit. Um, and that's going to happen now on lap 13. So oh, it's Perez, so that's so who it was. So our teammate making incredible progress. And we get past both of those as they pit then. So everybody's made their stops now. As we move on to lap 21. That's how boring a race I had, I'm afraid. And Perez is behind us on the medium tyres. Obviously trying to do a one-stop strategy if it doesn't rain. As we come out just behind Verstappen who's just made his second and final stop which is a bit of a mistake because the rain is now starting to fall and this was what we're trying to do so our tyres are shouting enough and this is around the time we would be looking to put on the soft set but we know the rain is coming and we know it's going to be fairly heavy rain so we just need to hold out and we might have a chance of challenging these balls in the wet if we can hang on to the back of the Stappen so as we go on to lap 26 now, our front top, front left, which just gets killed around here, is just has nothing left. We've lost so much pace to Verstappen. Um, and Perez has taken a huge amount out of our advantage. 
over him. So we're going to come in probably a couple of laps early, unfortunately. But we've really got no choice. We're losing so much pace. Um, I think I had a couple of moments to sort of a lap or two before. Um, but we're going to put the intermediates on and hope that the AI do the same. Years gone by, release, release. this can be a bit difficult. I've had bugs in this in the past where you think there's no way you could drive on the track in dry tyres and the AI just stay out until the end. No but um, at the very least, we only lose a position to Perez as we just about get ahead of Grosjean. So as long as we've got pace on these intermediates and they warm up nice and quickly, then we shouldn't be doing too much damage to ourselves if the AI do decide to stay out. But um, we're going to go later into this lap now, and a virtual safety car is called, so we back off immediately, and Grosjean just continues past us for some reason. I think it's because it hasn't quite activated, even though we've been told about it. Um, so we, I was unsure here whether it was just a mistake or not, but it wasn't. So Grosjean... I'm going to say it's a safety car bug, but at the same time, it's possible because the actual graphic didn't come off of the VSC, it hadn't actually been activated. But it's okay because on the restart, we get a much better drive out of the final corner. Those on the dry compounds really starting to struggle now, and it means we can easily outbreak Grosjean and retain that position as we pass a stricken Renault of Jolian Palmer. That's more like it head first in the barrier, <laughs> which obviously caused the virtual safety car in the first place. As we move on to lap 28 now, everybody is now coming in for the Inters. In, to be honest, the track seems exactly the same as it did when we pitted, so why they suddenly thought that was the time, probably because we were setting fast times, if, we, if I want to believe this game is realistic, which it is in senses, but I don't think the AI are quite that smart. But we're going to fast track now to lap 35. And it's been a pretty easy street since we put the Inters on. The whole race we've been stuck in this gap between Verstappen and eventually Perez who made his way through the field. And we're going to cross the line to take P6, some good points and due to Vettel's misdemeanors on so the opening that, lap the means that we get one more position than we thought we would as Hamilton takes the win ahead of Bottas and Räikkönen and all in all a pretty good race um, it definitely shows the pace of our car that Perez was able to come through from t last place on the grid to finish seventh and only about 13 seconds behind us at the flag which shows that we maybe didn't have our strongest race. But we really need to start catching those Red Bulls quickly because we have no one to fight behind. And Force India in this game this year are just it completely in no man's land. Now that Williams seems to have been debuffed um, with the last update, we really have nobody to fight. <laughs> but um, due to some bad results from Ricardo, we are actually closing in on him and we're not too far away. Verstappen now into the hundreds. Uh, we extend the gap back up a little bit after a couple of races of Perez closing back up. So we're only six points ahead of our teammate now. And Massa a further 30 points back. Which means, as I said, it's catch the Red Bulls or finish 6th and 7th really. And you can see in the constructors here, um, the gap has gone up a little bit to Red Bull. And the gap back to Williams is just humongous. So... Due, mostly due to the fact that Stroll has no uh, no points. But we're going to get finally our wish of being promoted to number one driver. And I feel Perez has done a lot better the last few races. But I think that was the straw that broke the camel's back that race. Just ticks us over the top. And it means that we now get some extra resource points on a race weekend. And that's going to be invaluable to making sure that they go into the aerodynamic parts to try and close that gap to Red Bull. But we've got two very strong races for us coming up. We've got Spa and we've got Monza. And if two tracks, if we have two tracks that we stand a chance of beating Red Bull, it is those two. So hopefully we can crack on from here, beat them in the next couple of races, and then we'll just have to see where our car is as to whether we can fight them for the rest of the year. But all in all, a fairly good race. Um, 
quite boring in the middle sections just being in that no man's land the rain spiced it up a little bit thankfully as did those incidents on lap one but that is going to be it from this weekend then as always i hope you guys enjoyed it if you are new to the channel don't forget that subscribe button we're closing in on 300 now which is incredible um hit that like button as well it just lets me know you're enjoying the series and encourages me to keep making them as i said i'm going to try and make them a little bit more regular now not quite two a week but sort of maybe every five or six days instead of week and a half as, as it has been but um, if i can get some more recorded this weekend then expect another one the first couple of days next week so as always guys you know i appreciate you a lot i appreciate you taking the time to watch these videos and until next time thank you so much for watching and i'll see you again very soon